this presentation, I'm going to go through the process of how to get air from our compressor over to our pneumatic tank. Oh, that was really loud. Uh, while my compressor charges up, I want to talk about these gauges for just a moment. If you look at my compressor, you can see it actually has two gauges. The gauge on the left is actually the pressure inside the tank in PSI. The gauge on the right is the accessory gauge. The tank that I have right now typically charges up to around 120, 125 PSI. And that's not typically what I want going out to my accessories or my tools or equipment, um, especially not my VAX. So I can turn this black dial here and it allows me to adjust the pressure that leaves the tank. So I've adjusted this dial to 80 PSI. So the pressure that's going to continuously leave the tank is only going to leave at 80 PSI even though the tank's going to charge all the way up to 125. This also allows me to utilize the air in the tank just a little bit longer before it kicks back on to recharge since the tank is pressurized at 125 and I'm only pulling the air out in units of 80. Okay, now that our compressor's charged up, let's go ahead and put the right tool on the end of our hose. So I want to get rid of the air gun and I want to go ahead and put on my tire pump inflator. So I'm going to grab onto the collar of the quick disconnect. I'm going to hold tightly onto my tool and I'm going to pull the quick disconnect backwards. Okay, so let's look at this collar. If you look down inside there, you can see some little silver ball bearings. And as I pull the collar down, those ball bearings can retract. And as you release it, it locks those ball bearings into place. So we pull back on it and push the tool into it. And then when you bring that collar back, it will seat the tool into place. Okay, so now that we have our air fitting onto the compressor, let's go ahead and try to put some air in the tank. Um, here I have the tank and I have some hose attached to it. Let's see how this works. Oh, hey, no, that's no good. Um, let's try a shutoff valve. So we'll put a shutoff valve onto the end here, and then we'll give it a try again. Now let's see what happens. Oh, that's doing the same thing. Oh, that's because the shutoff valve was open. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that shutoff valve. There, that's better. Hmm, if you were thinking that that sounds wrong, you're right. That's just exhausting out of an extremely high pressure. Uh, oh, because that's because we had it in backwards. Remember, there's only one direction that this actually wants to go in. So we'll put it in this way and make sure that it's shut off. We'll give it a try again. Hopefully this time it'll work. Okay, that's what we want. That whoosh of air that's actually going down inside there. And I can even feel the tank get warm as the air whooshes down inside there. And that's releasing it. Okay, so I can put air into it. Make sure when you're putting air under the tank, you actually watch the gauge. You'll see a drop in pressure. And once the pressure gets all the way back up to your setting, then you can go ahead and let it go. All right, and that's really it for the compressor. So we need to know how to change the quick disconnect fittings. We need to know how to put air into the tank and make sure your shutoff valve is on the correct way. And that's it. So now let's see if we can't transfer air from our tank over to our cylinders.